guess what? I think it's time for some bedtime stories. Don't you, Bernard? And because this is Shark Week, we're going to start off with a story about a shark. This is called Smiley Shark. It's written and illustrated by Ruth Galloway. Look at those teeth. Look at that smile. Far away in a deep rolling ocean lives Smiley Shark, the smiliest, sunniest, the friendliest and funniest, the biggest and the toothiest of all the fish. Every day, Smiley Shark watched the beautiful fish that dipped and dived and jiggled and jived and darted and dashed with a splish and a splash. Smiley Shark longed to splish and splash with the other fish, but whenever he smiled at them, they swam away. Smiley Shark swam up to Angelfish. Will you play with me? He asked. Angelfish shivered and shook, and then she raced away as fast as she could. Whoosh! Puffer was blowing bubbles. That looks like fun, laughed Smiley Shark. But Puffer blew himself up into a big spiky ball and pricked poor Smiley Shark on the nose, boink! Starfish was twirling and whirling, dancing and prancing. What fun, giggled Smiley Shark. But Starfish twirled off across the ocean floor. Swirl. Smiley Shark showed his toothy smile to jellyfish, an octopus, and catfish. And in a flash, they all took off as fast as they could swim. Everyone is scared of my big white teeth, wailed Smiley Shark. He didn't feel much like smiling anymore. And then splish, splash, twisting and turning, splashing and churning, the fish danced faster than ever. Smiley Shark watched from a distance, but this time, Something was very wrong. All the fish were trapped. Help, cried the fish. Oh, please help us, Smiley Shark. Smiley Shark swam around and around the fisherman's net. What could he do? How could he help? The only thing Smiley Shark could do was smile. Ah! screamed the fisherman, dropping his heavy net into the water. I'm getting out of here, he cried. Hooray, cheered the fish. We're safe. Thank you, Smiley Shark. And now, far away in the deep rolling ocean, lives Smiley Shark and all his friends. And every day they can be seen dipping and diving, darting and dashing, splishing and splashing, and smiling. I'm glad he found friends, aren't you? Well, there were five little fishes swimming in the sea, teasing Mr. Shark. Oh, you can't catch me. But along comes Mr. Shark, just as hungry as can be, and he goes, snap. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? So there are four little fish who are swimming in the sea, teasing Mr. Shark, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Shark, just as hungry as can be, and he goes, snap. Three little shark who were swimming in the sea, teasing Mr. Shark, no, you can't catch me, but along is Mr. Shark, just as hungry as can be, and he goes, snap. Two little fish were swimming in the sea, teasing Mr. Shark, hey, you can't catch me, but along is Mr. Shark, just as hungry as can be, and he goes, snap. 
One little shark is swimming in the sea, teasing Mr. Shark, hey, you can't catch me. But along goes Mr. Shark, just as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. No more little fish swimming in the sea. Don't you tease Mr. Shark, and not me. Our next story is about another chompy jaw animal, Solomon Crocodile. This is written and illustrated by Katherine Rayner, and up here it says, uh-oh, here comes trouble. All is peaceful on the banks of the river. Everyone is relaxing in the morning sun until... Uh-oh, here comes trouble. Solomon splats and slops through the mud to make the frogs all jump. But the frogs croak, go away, Solomon. You're nothing but a pest. So Solomon shakes the bulrushes and bugs the dragonflies. But the dragonflies sing, go away, Solomon. You're nothing but a nuisance. Solomon decides to stalk the storks, and they get in such a flap. Go away, Solomon, the storks squawk. You're nothing but a pain. Out of the corner of his eye, Solomon spies the biggest hippo in the river. This could be the best fun yet, he thought. Solomon charges, but Solomon, roars the biggest hippo, go away, you're nothing but trouble. Poor Solomon, no one wants to play. But then Solomon hears a noise. Somebody is making the frogs jump. Somebody is bugging the dragonflies. And somebody has the storks in a flap. But it is not Solomon. Somebody is getting nearer and nearer. Snap! Uh-oh, here comes double trouble. Look out, river animals. Solomon's got a friend. Well, shall we do another finger play? Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, Shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, Stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. How about you stand up? Bernard, you can do this part. Can you jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake. 
Shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, enough about eating, I think. This is a story that's a twist on a familiar one. This is called The Three Pig Sisters. It is written by Cecil Kim and illustrated by Kyun Park. And this book is published by Norwood House Press. And I see one, two, three. So it must be all of the pig sisters. But what else do you see? The three pig sisters were ready to leave home. They would make a new house in the woods. Their mother worried about them. Oh my dears, have you heard the story of the three pigs and the big bad wolf? Make sure you build solid houses to keep you safe from the wolf. The sisters thought about their mother's words. The oldest sister said, those pigs made a mistake. They built three different houses. The middle sister said, if we work together, we can make one very strong house for all of us. You are so right, said the youngest sister. The next morning, the three sisters left home. Tears streamed from their mother's eyes and she mopped her face with her apron. Do be careful, dear children, she said. Don't worry, mother, they told her. We will build a very strong house and we will defeat any wolf that comes our way. When the sisters arrived in the woods, they found a place to build their house and they divided the work three ways. I will clear the ground for our house, said the oldest sister. I will get logs from the woods, said the middle sister. I will make the bricks, said the youngest sister. While the oldest pig cleared the ground, the middle pig went to get logs. And on the way, she saw some tasty berries. She decided to eat a few. In order to make bricks, the youngest pig needed water. And near the stream, she found some berries and she decided to eat a few. But the two sisters did not know that the berries were sleeping berries. And soon the two pigs were fast asleep. The wolf who had been watching rubbed his paws together. Ha ha ha, it has been a long time since I last ate. Those two pigs look delicious. At that moment, the oldest pig called, sisters, sisters, where are you? The wolf left the sleeping pigs and ran away to hide. The oldest pig woke her sisters. Why aren't you working? She asked. We ate some red berries, they said. We fell asleep. The oldest pig sniffed the berries and then she saw the wolf's footprints. A wolf has been here, she said. Hurry, sisters, we must work together and build our strong house. So the three sisters worked hard, cutting down trees, making bricks, and they set up strong wooden pillars. They built strong brick walls. They made doors and windows and a shiny red roof. They had a beautiful, strong house. But the three pig sisters had one more job to do. They had to take care of the big bad wolf. So they made a pot of soup and opened the windows. The hungry wolf sniffed the air. Oh, a delicious smell came from the pig's house, but the house was too strong to blow down. The wolf had to find another way. He remembered the trouble he'd had getting down the chimney of another pig's house. So this time he would have to break down the door. The wolf ran at the door, but it was already open and he fell right into the house, crash. Why is it so dark, he wondered. And then he heard voices. I'll tie his front legs together. I'll tie his back legs together. I'll feed him the sleeping berries. And when the wolf woke up, he was tied tightly to a chair. 
Shall we drop him down a well? asked the oldest pig sister. No, no, cried the wolf. Oh, please don't. I only bothered you because I'm hungry. Oh, so hungry. An old wolf like me can't hunt for food. What would the pig sisters do? Well, they decided to work with the wolf to make a farm on their land. The oldest pig grew corn. The middle pig grew potatoes. And the youngest pig grew apples on apple trees. Oh, sweet, juicy apples. And what did the wolf do? Why, he weeded the gardens and looked after the chickens. Food filled the table in the strong house. It is great to work together, said the wolf to the three pig sisters. And what he said was indeed true. And you know, they all lived and worked together happily for a long, long time. And that's the end. Oh, I'm so glad they found another way to get along with each other. Well, shall we do another finger play? Hmm. Hmm. I don't think we've cooked any hot dogs tonight, and all of that food in that story was making me hungry, so can you get your five hot dogs ready? I've got my five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, I think we've got time for one more story before we have our flannel board. And this is, well, kind of a familiar one too, with a little bit of a twist. This is called, There Was an Old Mermaid Who Swallowed a Shark. This is written by Lucille Calandro and illustrated by Jared Lee. It's published by Scholastic. And there's a whole series of There Was an Old Lady books that uh, Lucille has done. So you might want to check them out. But this time, she's gonna swallow a shark. Can you believe it? A shark, he called. A mermaid, she said. Well, there was an old mermaid who swallowed a shark. I don't know why she swallowed the shark, but it left no mark. That great white shark left no mark. How can that be? At 15 feet long and 15,000 pounds, hmm, 5,000 pounds, excuse me, Beats me. Well, there certainly has been a lot of eating going on in these stories, or a lot of big, no, that's not right. We certainly have had a lot of animals in our stories tonight with jaws that want to eat. And we're back with a shark story. This is again, another one that might be a little bit familiar. This is, there was an old mermaid who swallowed a shark. It's written by Lucille Calandro, who has done a whole series of books about there was an old lady. And it's illustrated by Jared Lee. Why do you think she'd want to eat a shark? Hmm. A shark, cried the boy. A mermaid, said the girl. Now there was an old mermaid who swallowed a shark. I don't know why she swallowed the shark, but it left no mark. The great white shark left no mark? How can that be? At 15 feet long and 5,000 pounds? Hmm, said the girl, beats me. There was an old mermaid who swallowed a squid. 
That's what she did. She swallowed a squid. She swallowed the squid to float with the shark. I don't know why she swallowed the shark, but it left no mark. Did the squid sim swim really fast? It propelled itself with a mighty jet blast. <sighs> there was an old mermaid who swallowed a fish, a tropical fish. That was her wish. She swallowed the fish to dance with the squid. She swallowed the squid to float with the shark. But I don't know why she swallowed the shark, but it left no mark. Sharks have rows and rows of teeth, he said. Does that mean they chomp and chew what they eat? Nope, we swallow it whole. Now that's a feat. There was an old mermaid who swallowed an eel. She let out a squeal ee, as she swallowed that eel. She swallowed the eel to brighten the fish. She swallowed the fish to dance with the squid. She swallowed the squid to float with the shark. I don't know why she swallowed the shark, but it left no mark. So why did the eel look so bright, he asked. Its body creates fluorescent light, she said. There was an old mermaid who swallowed a crab. It was tough to grab, but she swallowed that crab. She swallowed the crab to tickle the eel. She swallowed the eel to brighten the fish. She swallowed the fish to dance with the squid. She swallowed the squid to float with the shark. I don't know why she swallowed the shark, but it left no mark. Did the crab lose a claw when it was snared? No need to worry, I can grow a spare. There was an old mermaid who swallowed a sea star. She didn't swim far to swallow that star. She swallowed the sea star to play with the crab. She swallowed the crab to tickle the eel. She swallowed the eel to brighten the fish. She swallowed the fish to dance with the squid. She swallowed the squid to float with the shark. I don't know why she swallowed the shark, but it did not leave a mark. Why didn't the sea star swim away? Oh, without a brain, it's hard to stray. Did you know starfish don't have brains? Hmm. There was an old mermaid who swallowed a clam. It was fun to cram her mouth with a clam. Oh. There was an old mermaid who loved to spend her whole day playing, yes, playing, pretend. That everything under the water, everything was her friend. Can you see where she is? I think she's at the aquarium. So there's the shark and the squid and the eel and the tropical fish and the crab and the sea star and the clam. That's where she saw them all. And at the end of the book, they say, I wish we could learn more about these underwater creatures. Turn the pages for extra features, says the seagull. And there you can get some information about sharks, squids, tropical fish, eels, crabs, sea stars, and clams. And you know where else you can get information like that? At your library. Well, can you wiggle your, oh no, I was gonna have you wiggle your fingers, but we need to eat our bubble gum. So reach in your pocket, pull out your piece of pretend bubble gum, unwrap it, and pop the gum in your mouth, chew it up until it's all soft and squishy, and then we'll do something disgusting with it. Here we go. Okay, put out your hand. One, two, three, spit your gum in your hand and clap your other hand on top of it. Isn't that disgusting? 
And now our hands are stuck together with sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. How do we get it off? We say on stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. On stick, come on back. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your foot. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. Well, it's time for our flannel board story, and it's about five different ocean animals. And there's a motion that's going to go with each one of them that I'd like you to do. So let's practice before we have the rhymes. So we're going to have a shark. Do you know what sharks do? They chomp, chomp like a shark. Can you do that? Chomp jump like a shark and then we have a dolphin and the dolphins dive so can you dive dive like a dolphin and then there's a whale who spouts water out of its blowhole so we're going to blow blow like a whale we're going to have an octopus and we're going to wave wave like an octopus and the last one is a crab and we're going to pinch pinch like a crab can you remember that chomp chomp Dive, dive, blow, blow, wave, wave, and pinch, pinch. Okay, let's go. Well, sharks have rows and rows of teeth. They don't chew gum, but they do chew meat. So let's chomp like a shark. Chomp, chomp like a shark. Let's chomp like a shark. Chomp, chomp like a shark. Dolphins aren't fish, but they play in the sea. They swallow fish whole that they catch with their teeth. Can you? So let's dive like a dolphin. Dive, dive like a dolphin. So let's dive like a dolphin. Dive, dive like a dolphin. We hold our breath by holding our nose, but whales hold their breath when they close their holes. But let's blow like a whale. Blow, blow like a whale. Let's blow like a whale. Blow, blow like a whale. Well, octopi wave their eight arms at me. They don't taste with their mouth, but with their arms, you see. So let's wave like an octopus. Wave, wave like an octopus. Wave, wave like an octopus. Let's wave like an octopus. Crabs don't go forward, only side to side. On the beach, they may pinch, so you should hide. So let's pinch like a crab. Pinch, pinch like a crab. So let's pinch like a crab. Pinch, pinch like a crab. So those are the animals and how they get around. Well, it must be time to finish up our stories. So tonight we're gonna to go with our dinosaurs by Sandra Boynton, published by Workman. 
When the sun has gone down and the blue stars appear, then the dinosaurs know that their bedtime is near. So they all clean their teeth and their sweet faces too. Then they wriggle and stretch, just like dinosaurs do. Their pajamas are cozy. They all pull them on. Then they yawn and they yawn and they yawn and they yawn. Now they all settle down in a dinosaur heap. They all close their eyes. They all fall asleep. And soon they are dreaming, our dinosaur friends. I'm afraid this is when all the snoring begins. Honk, snore. <gasps> Show, show, show. The snoring goes on and on and on through the night. They never stop snoring till the first morning light. I like all the dinos, but I just want to say, thank goodness those dinos live far, far away. Well, those are our stories, Bernard. Guess what? It's time for us to say good night. Thanks for joining us for some bedtime stories here from Wood Library, and we hope you'll join us again.